Story Hatchery is one of 10 fish hatcheries and fish rearing stations operated by the Wyoming Game and Fish Department. Renovations completed in the summer of 2010 make Story Hatchery unique. The facility is now an important egg producer for the entire state. Five different adult fish breeding groups, or brood stocks, call Story home. Each year, the hatchery is responsible for the production of up to five million eggs. These eggs include lake, rainbow, brook, brown, and golden trout. Hybrids, such as splake and tiger trout, are also produced here. Fish spawn or produce eggs once a year. Our brook, brown, and lake trout spawn in October. The rainbow trout spawn in the early spring and the golden trout spawn in the summer. To spawn the fish, we put them into a tub of water that is mixed with an anesthetic. This makes the fish relaxed and much easier to handle. Then we gently run our hand down the adult female's belly to make her release her eggs. Each female can produce anywhere from 700 to 4,000 eggs per year, depending on her age and species. Milt from an adult male is obtained in the same way and is mixed with the eggs to fertilize them. Unlike salmon, trout don't die after spawning and we can use them year after year. Our brook, brown, golden, and rainbow trout are spawned when they are between three and five years old. Our lake trout are spawned every year from age six all the way to 15. After being mixed with milt, the eggs are gently rinsed with water to remove any broken shells or waste. Then they are put into large tubs where they sit for an hour, giving their eggshells time to harden. Next, they are placed into an iodine solution. This will kill any germs or bacteria that might spread to other eggs or fish inside the hatchery. After being rinsed again with water, they are measured in a special instrument called a Von Baer trough. This is used to find the number of eggs in one ounce. The eggs are then measured by volume or ounces before being transferred to an incubator. This way is much easier than counting every single egg. There are three different types of incubators at the Story Hatchery. Jar incubators, like this one, keep the eggs constantly moving, which helps to keep them clean. If we have a large number of eggs, they are gently placed on trays and put into the drip incubator. Here we can hold up to a million eggs in one small space. We can also use a Heath incubator to store our young developing eggs. These developing eggs are also known as green eggs. Whatever the incubator, the eggs always have a constant flow of fresh, clean water to keep them moist and healthy. After several weeks in the incubator, the eggs have developed enough for us to see their eyes and are now called eyed eggs. This is our signal to bump them. Bumping is a way to sort out the bad or unfertilized eggs. If an egg is weak, a bump will rupture the membranes inside and the egg will turn white. If it is healthy, it will bounce off unharmed and stay clear. Now we can either pick them by hand 
or run them through an electronic egg picker to remove the dead eggs. The eggs will then be shipped to a different location for hatching. The shipping process is simple. First, we measure the eggs. Then we place them into a tray with a wet cloth to keep them moist. The cloth is wrapped around the eggs gently but tightly before placing the tray into a shipping cooler. We always make sure that the top tray is full of ice. As the ice melts, it drips, keeping the eggs moist during their journey. Finally, the eggs are delivered to other Wyoming hatcheries or shipped overnight to other states. Some eggs are shipped as far as Tennessee or New Jersey. When the eggs begin to hatch at their next destination, they don't resemble fish at all. They have a yolk sac attached to their belly. This sac is similar to the clear part of a chicken's egg, and it provides all of the nutrition that the developing fish, or sac fry, need to grow. Because they don't need to look for food, the sac fry are not very active and usually just lie on the trough bottom. They start to swim to the surface of the water to find food once they have absorbed the yolk sac. The young fish are now called swim-up fry. These tiny fish have tiny bellies but big appetites. They are fed up to eight times a day. When the fish have grown a few inches to about the size of your finger, they are called fingerlings. Fingerling fish are then moved to larger and larger circular tanks and raceways as they grow into adults. Some adult fish may return to story and join a brood stock to provide eggs in the future. Once the fish are large enough to be stocked out and transported to their final home, workers gather all of the fish in the tank with a large net called a seine. The fish are then netted weighed and loaded onto the stocking truck. Stocking tanks are made of fiberglass. Smaller tanks can hold just over 300 gallons of water. This tank is sort of like a cross between your fish tank at home and a cooler. It has air stones to provide the fish with oxygen and is very well insulated to keep the water nice and cool. Sometimes a hatchery has so many fish to stock we have to call in the statewide fish distribution crew to come and help. Their large trucks hold about 2,000 gallons of water and have room for many thousands of fish. A fish pump is used to load these big trucks. It works like a giant vacuum and can empty a tank in just a few minutes. Once the fish reach their destination, the driver backs up to the water's edge, pulls the plug, and the fish ride a stream of water into their new home. Back at the story hatchery, there are plenty of things to keep our crew busy when we aren't spawning fish or caring for eggs. Troughs and raceways always need lots of cleaning. And we take pride in maintaining our grounds. Sometimes we even have to work in the office. While you are here at the hatchery, keep a close eye out for other visitors, like wild turkeys, or an American dipper bird dancing at the water's edge. You might even see a pair of mallards on the pond. If you prefer furry animals, watch for a deer grazing or a marmot sunbathing on the rocks. Please be courteous and follow the rules while you are here. These include listening to your teachers and tour guide, staying with the group, no running, and keeping your hands out of the water.
We work hard here at Story and at fish hatcheries across the state to make sure you can enjoy a fun day of fishing. <laughs> All right. We are happy to have you here and hope you have learned a little something about Wyoming fish hatcheries during your visit.